The event of Mubahala was a meeting between the Islamic prophet Muhammad and a Christian delegation from Najran present-day Yemen, in the month of Dhul Hijjah, 10 October 6 October 631, October 631-2, October 632-3, where Muhammad invoked a curse attempting to reveal who was lying about their religious differences. The initial effort was to invite the Najrani Christians to Islam and acknowledgement of Muhammad as a prophet. During religious discussions of similarities and differences, the topic of the divinity of Isa Arabic, I Y say Jesus arose. The Christians refused to accept Muhammad's teachings about Christ and refused denying their beliefs. Muhammad invoked a mubahala prayer curse regarding their refusal, and included his children and wives in the call to invoke a curse. According to a hadith in Bihar al Anwar, Muhammad brought only selected members of his family Husayn, Hassan, Fatima, and Ali. The Christians were surprised and, according to the traditions, decided not to invoke a curse on Muhammad and the others. They instead asked for peace by offering Muhammad tribute in return for protection. Islamic sources offer various explanations of the outcome. Some narratives suggest the Christians would have perished by the end of the year if they had entered into the imprecations. The event is commemorated annually on 24 Dhu al Hijjah by Shia and is an inceptual argument for Shia Muslims in proving that all al Qisa Arabic, al al Qisa, a people of the cloak, are the all al Bayt Arabic, al al Ba Yt, people of the household of Muhammad, mentioned in the Quran. Topic concept. Al Mubahala Arabic Almbalt is derived from the Arabic word bala curse. Bahala is a root verb meaning to curse. Al bal the curse also means a scarcity of water. The term Mubahala can also mean withdrawing mercy from one who lies or engages in falsehood. In the Quran, Al Mubahala invocation of God's curse was mentioned as a decisive solution to the dispute over Jesus between the Christians of Najran and Muhammad. Allah ordered Muhammad to call on the Christians to invoke God's curse, Mubahala, verse 3.61, in order to determine who was telling the truth. The Quran's Mubahala verse is one of the most controversial verses due to the debate with Christianity and more so the Shia and Sunni division within Islam. Praying for God to curse the liar regarding religious disputes is an ancient Arabic tradition. Mubahala was common among Semitic tribes, being found in pre Islamic writings. The event of Mubahala is an instance of the Quran's critique of a central Christian doctrine, God on earth as Christ. Incarnation. From this historical event, Muslims were to continue challenging and criticizing major points of the Christian faith with Christians defending and defining their doctrines and practices. <laughs> Background In the ninth year of Hijra, Muhammad is reported sending a letter to Abdul Haris ibn Alkama, Grand Bishop of Najran, the official representative of the Roman Church in the Hiyas, inviting the people of that area to embrace Islam. In response to that letter, a delegation was sent to Muhammad. Between 21 and 25 of Dhul Hijjah 10 AH, 22 to the 26th of March 632 AD, specific dates contested. The delegation arrived, and discussions of religion and theology began, with the subject eventually turning to Jesus, the Messiah, and the question of defining what and who Jesus is understood to be. Muhammad preached to them and requested them to accept Islam. The Christians, however, were not convinced and responded with their explanations of Christ being divine. Because of the Christians' refusal to accept Muhammad's demand to acknowledge his prophetic message of Jesus, the call to invoke a curse was initiated by Muhammad. Topic. Verse of Mubahala According to the traditional account, after being unable to resolve the conflict over who Jesus is, the following verses are believed to have been revealed to Muhammad. Surely the case of Jesus is like the case of Adam. He created him out of dust, then he said to him, Be, and he was. This is the truth from thy Lord, so be thou not of those who doubt. Now whoso disputes with thee concerning him, after what has come to thee of knowledge, say to him, Come let us call Abniyana Arabic, Ab-en and our sons and Abna'akam Arabic, Ab-en Ak-em your sons and Nisana Arabic, ni esana our women and Nisakam Arabic, ni es em your women and Anfusana Arabic, on fsna ourselves and Anfusakam Arabic, on fskm yourselves, then let us pray fervently and invoke the curse of Allah on those who lie. 
Traditional narrative from hadiths According to Ibn Hisham Sirah, Muhammad recites the Mubahala verses to the Christians and after lengthy discussions, no agreement was reached on the position and standing of Jesus. At the end of the discussions, Muhammad demands the two sides engage in Mubahala, the Christians return to the place they were staying. Their leader al Sayyid al-Aqib advised them saying, if he challenges us with his people, we accept the challenge for he is not a prophet, but if he challenges us with his family in particular we don't challenge him, for he is not going to put forward his family unless he is truthful." The morning of 24th Dhul Hijjah, Muhammad emerged at the appointed time. He brought only selected members of his family, carrying Husayn in his arm with Hassan holding his hand, followed by Fatima and Ali. Tradition states the Christians were surprised when they saw Muhammad's family, Ali, Fatima, Hassan and Husayn, accompanying Muhammad. Muhammad offered to do the Mubahala, asking each conflicting party to cover themselves with a cloak, and that all parties ask God sincerely to destroy and inflict with curses on the lying party and their families. The Christians consulted each other and Abdul Haris Lbne Alkama, the greatest scholar among them, talked them out of carrying out the Mubahala. The Christians refused, so Muhammad gave them two alternatives, either to convert to Islam or pay the jizya a tax on free non-Muslims under Muslim rule. The Christians agreed to pay tribute and asked Muhammad to send with them a trustworthy man to aid them in judging monetary disputes amongst themselves. Muhammad is said to have agreed and appointed Abu Ubaidah bin al Jara out of a large group of willing and hopeful contenders. <laughs> <laughs> Accounts of the Christians' response The earliest Islamic testimonials hadith and histories report different details regarding the dialogue between the Christians and Muhammad. Ibn Ishaq reports in his Surat al-Nabi the delegation's leader is convinced of Muhammad's prophethood and advises cursing Muhammad would be a disaster. In Muqaddal, the Christian leader simply says that in any scenario, cursing Muhammad would be disastrous and that Allah will destroy the liars by the end of the year. Al-Tabari reports uncertainty among the Christians and that according to Amir al-Shabi, after the Christians initially accept the Mubahala they later seek advice from a wise man in their group, with that man rebuking them and convincing them not to invoke the curse. Ibn Sa'd doesn't provide details of the dialogue aside from the Christian leader responding to Muhammad with We think it proper not to curse you. You may order us as you like and we shall obey you and shall make peace with you. <laughs> Al-Al-Bayt Controversy between the Shia and Sunni branches of Islam exists regarding the verse of Mubahala. Modern scholars critique the tendency of later commentators of relating many Quranic passages to this particular event. According to Al Mizan by Allama Tabatabai, a Shia scholar, the first, us, in this verse has a different import from the plural pronouns used in our sons, our women, and our near people. The former refers to both the Islam and Christian sides, while the other three, our, s refer to the side of Islam only. This way, a meaningful short sentence implies a longer sentence equal in meaning. Based on Madeline, interpreting the term our sons as the two grandsons of the Prophet is reasonable and consequently the parents, Ali and Fatima, may be included in this verse. The members Muhammad's family, who were expected to participate in this event are not modified in some of the Sunni sources, while some others mention Fatima, Hassan and Husayn as the participants. Meanwhile, some of the Sunni sources are in agreement with Shia beliefs stating that the Al Al Qisa, including Ali, participated in the occasion. Shia scholar Tabatabai has mentioned in his Tafsir al Mizan that Al Maimon had asked Ali al Ridda several questions, one of which was as follows What is the proof for the caliphate of your grandfather, Ali ibn Abi Talib? The verse of ourselves. The Imam replied, If there were not our women, Al Maimon said, if there were not our sons, the Imam said. Tabatabai says, The Imam argued on the strength of the word, ourselves. He meant that God had made Ali like the person of the Prophet, and who could have more right to succeed the Prophet than his own person? Al Maimon said, If there were not our women, he wanted to say that the reference to women indicates that the word ourselves means our men, and as such it would not show any excellence. The Imam replied, if there were not our sons, that is, if ourselves referred to the men, then why should the sons be mentioned separately? They would have been included in our men. 
Topic: As an argument. Mubahala provided an opportunity for Muhammad to introduce the people of his household, who were also given the title Al Al Kisa afterward. Shias believe this authentic hadith proves whom the Quran is referring to when it mentions the Al Al Bayt, namely only Ali, Fatima, and their descendants. This event causes some scholars to conclude the power and superiority of Ali, especially when it comes to his right of imama and immediate successorship following Muhammad. In such debates, each side brings forward the most informed men. It is seen as one of the merits of al al bayt and is widely used by the Shia to prove that Muhammad, Ali, Fatima, Hassan, and Husayn are all al Qisa and most prominent among his al al bayt. Topic: <laughs> Modern understanding. According to Sidney H. Griffith, it is noteworthy that in this passage the Quran leaves the judgment with God, once the two parties would have staked their lives and those of their loved ones on their own steadfastness in faith. Scholar W. Schmucker states the ascription to the Christians from Najran is fictitious and the obscure verse doesn't relate to any historical event, concluding the later doctrines and legends were built around the verse to further dogma. Instead, he states the verse was to extol Muhammad's religious rank in abstract terms, and the inclusion of relatives was according to regional ethnic tradition to show prominence over other tribal and family groups. Parts of the Quran are interpreted as forging a continuous dialogue between Muslims and Christians. In the same time, however, it assumes that the dialogue between Jews, Christians, and Muslims will sometimes take the form of arguments about religion, for one passage says. Do not dispute with the people of the book save in the fairest way, except for those who are evil doers. And say, We believe in what has been sent down to us and what has been sent to you. Our God and your God are one and to him we are submissive. Archaeologist and historical linguist, Dr. Muhammad Marikton, states regarding how ancient Arabic practices fashioned Islamic thought, the curses in the inscriptions of pre-Islamic Arabia are not only very important for an understanding of maledictory practice in the ancient Near East, but provide information on the religious thought in ancient South Arabia and illuminate the background for the use of curses in Islam. In the Quran, God is relentless in cursing unbelievers and evildoers, and the term lama is attested many times. In this, ancient Near Eastern curse traditions seem to have been carried over into the Islamic ethical system. Summary from Mukadil's tafsir explains the event of Mubahala was less about the confrontation with the Najran Christians but more about the authority of Muhammad and his claim of prophethood. As explained in the Mukadil's exegesis, the divinity of Jesus was less of a precedent despite the legend of the confrontation between Muhammad and the Christians. The effort instead, as described in the tafsir, was to determine the Jewish community of Medina and the Najrani Christians to be subordinate to Muhammad's honor. According to Muhammad Hussein Tabatabai in Tafsir al Mizan, Muhammad said that the Christians escaped being turned into monkeys and pigs, and all of Najran would have perished within a year of the Mubahala. Eid al Mubahala Eid al-Mubahala is an annual Shia Muslim commemoration of Mubahala. It takes place on 24 Du al-Hijjah. According to Louis Messignon, a Catholic scholar of Islam, there are many different attitudes among Shia and Sunnis regarding the Mubahala. One of those disagreement is in terms of the approving of the verse of Quran on Mubahala whether the verse 3, 54 was with the presence of the five persons including as Fatima. According to Shia sources not only did Mubahala happen with the presence of Fatima, but Fatima was considered as someone who was on the forefront of the religion of Islam. In other words, some sects believe there was a symbolic role during the event of Mubahala. Some sects such as Nusayre believe that the Christians of Najran recognize the place of Fatima as the place of Maryam Mary, Mother of Jesus. In the Gregorian calendar While Eid al-Mubahala is always on nearly the same day 24 al of the Islamic calendar, the date on the Gregorian calendar varies from year to year because of differences between the two calendars, since the Islamic calendar, the Hijri calendar ah, is a lunar calendar and the Gregorian calendar is a solar calendar. This date is shown for a selection of years, according to the Calendar Center of Geophysics Institute of Tehran University, in the table below. Topic. Notes 
Topic References Topic External Links Tafsir al Mizan, Exegesis of 3 to 61 minus 63 Peshawar Nights Mubahala in Persian